groups who are joining us on Zoom. So we're streaming live on Facebook and our participants will be coming in now. So you're all very welcome to this session on the Think Tank. I don't know what to say, but I'm surrounded here by three gentlemen of wisdom because they have not only survived, but they've thrived in business in this wonderful photography industry of ours for approaching 50 years, if not more than 50 years each. So just to put that in context, only one in 10 businesses in the world, regardless of the business, survive more than 25 years in business. And these gentlemen, each of them, are approaching double that. So I'm sure they have plenty to share with us. They've been through things not quite the same as this. This is different than other, other experiences. However, they've managed to bring their businesses through approaching 50 years of various challenges along the way. So I'm sure they're going to share great wisdom with us as to how they manage to not only survive those instances, but rebuild their businesses and thrive again to be still here with us today in business. So I'm deeply honored to be joined by Ray Lowe, um, chairman of MPA and businessman extraordinaire. We have Michael Taylor, past president of PPA and business person extraordinaire. And of course, Ralph Romaguerra, again, Pat, another past president of PPA and businessman extraordinaire. So I don't know where to start, but maybe I'll start be top left-hand corner, seeing as you're up there, Ray. Um, say hello to everybody and tell us a little bit about how you got started in the photography industry. And... Hi, and welcome to everybody, um, wherever you are in the world. The one thing with being told that these three people have got wisdom is that everybody sits there expecting us to have the answer. You would never ever put the words wisdom and Ray Lowe in the same sentence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's expecting that uh, eternal answer of how we're going to get out of this, I don't think there is one. I think the strangest thing of all is that we're all in it. And that's never, ever happened before. We've had our own recessions. I've been through, I think, three or four different recessions over that 45 years in business. Um, I've actually been a photographer for 52 years, but actually in business for 45 years and the recessions were things that happened in your own country they happened to a particular part of the country or a particular um, money base of the country i.e the richest people of all were never affected by the recessions but this one this is something that nobody can ever imagine how bad it is how bad it could still get um, we probably all now know somebody that's had it, survived it or died from it. I certainly do. Um, some of my members um, have had it. Um, I'm chairman of the Master Photographers Association. So I speak on behalf of a thousand photo professional photographers in the UK. Um, but I get about 50 emails a day asking advice and asking different questions but there is no advice you can give them because we do not know, we do not understand. I was just saying to the guys, I saw something last night of Las Vegas empty. I mean, that brought it home to me like nothing in my own country because Las Vegas empty is an oxymoron. You know, it's something you would not imagine. Um, but no matter what we've been through, individually or collectively, we are not experienced for this because this has nothing to do really at the moment about money. It's got everything to do with health. No matter how rich you are, it is not going to stop you getting it. And no matter how rich you are, you're on the same planet as everybody else. And it's the planet that is in problems, in danger. But it also shows you that nature is far, far more powerful than man will ever be. And to be in the company of these two gentlemen, you've got the good looking eye candy of Ralph that everybody, of everybody swans around looking at Ralph going, wow. And then you've got big brother in Michael Taylor that everybody wants to give a cuddle to. And we know that both of them are only successful because of Cindy and Monica. You know, they're just a couple of front guys. <laughs> That's the true of us all, isn't it? Oh, really, it's you know? definitely true of us all. So if you want to know what success is, 
Don't bother with us. Just ask Cindy and Monica, and then you'll get the answers. <laughs> Ralph, can I come to you next, Ralph? Because sure you um, can. Like you know, we we've had conversations about Katrina, and you know what that you know what that was like, and and, and as Ray says, it was sort of central. It was just in New Orleans, right? Right. Um, but regardless of where it is, it still wiped out an economy around New Orleans. So you, 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 in your business, you know, you had to do certain things to survive that and rebuild and stuff. Do you want to just talk a little bit about Katrina for those who aren't aware of what Katrina was and the devastation that happened? Well, Katrina was 15 years ago. And um, it, it's so different than what we have today. Like you're saying, that was the New Orleans Gulf Coast region where a lot of homes were destroyed and, and that type of thing. This is so different. This is, as Ray said, it's the planet, it's the world. This is a world war that everybody is on one side versus the virus on the other side. A long time ago, a long time ago, I was listening to some motivational tapes and something that stuck with me, stuck with me all these years was success equals progress, growth, and change. And the most constant of the three is change. So we need to figure out what we're going to do different for the new normal, because I don't think we're going to get back to where we were two months ago for at least a year or two. But Katrina was bad, and it's perseverance. Um, you know, God will take care of all of us, and we just have to fight forward. Thank you, Ray. And I agree with Ray. Out of the three, I'm really the best looking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say the four, because then, you know, I'm well, definitely I mean, bottom of the list. You know, no, yeah. I mean, you are number one in my book. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go away to that. <laughs> Always the charmer. <laughs> and Michael. What, 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 what have you seen in the past in terms of challenges in your business and how does that relate to where we all are now? Well, like, like the, Ray and Ralph have said, there's nothing that relates. You know, uh, we all have challenges. We have a challenge when we start our business. We have a challenge when the economy is different. We have a challenge when we move from film to digital. Uh, it's always, there's always challenges. Um, I think the, the good thing about, the good thing actually about this, and you know, I, I know in our relationship, Monica and I, she worries too much and I probably worry too little. You know, I'm, I'm really an optimist. And I've been actually glad for this little bit of a time out to refresh, rethink, um, kind of redirect a little bit, get some energy back, um, get excited again about what's in, in front of us. And um, um, looking forward to getting back into the community and, and refreshing relationships and getting back with clients. And I think, I think like Ralph has said, this has affected the whole world. And I think we've all had this time out to get reconnected with our friends, our families, uh, to realize what's really important. Uh, to realize that we need to, we need each other. Isn't it amazing how we're so interconnected with our communities, right? It's crazy. Have you ever thought of your, your grocery store workers as heroic? You know, I mean, it's incredible. These truck drivers that are bringing produce and all that stuff, we are so connected together. And I've never appreciated that so much. So I'm not giving you an answer, but I'm just telling you from just a personal standpoint that uh, there are things I do appreciate about it. I appreciate this time out because I'm, I'm looking forward to being more connected, more appreciative, uh, caring more for our neighbors and uh, people around us. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Ray, I want to go back to you. Um, so I haven't lived through a war but when you look back, 
this is the first one for me. <laughs> this is the first one for me. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you have, but I suppose the point I'm trying to make <laughs> is that they say that human beings, that we become more innovative in wartime, which we're in now. Is there anything that you are seeing in our industry where or you're doing in your business or in, the orga, in your organization, the MPA that, that you're chairman of, that you say is you're seeing new innovation? Yeah, and, and funny, following on from what the two guys have just said as well, I think change is the constant. Everything changes every day of the week and we stay in business for as long as we do because we handle change. Um, I remember a long time ago um, standing on the wing of an aircraft and being scared that it moved so much. And the engineer said if it didn't move, it would snap. And therefore in life, you've got to be flexible. And that's the, and the same when I stood at the top of the Eiffel Tower and it moved, it scares the life out of you. But if it didn't move, it would snap off. And we as businessmen, we as photographers have got to learn to be as flexible as we need to be. Um, I th this is gonna sound absolutely ridiculous, but what has happened in the end is gonna be a good thing because it's going to make people realize they need each other. Exactly as Michael was saying about, you're gonna appreciate the other workers. We all, I mean, in this country, there's a huge campaign towards the NHS and how we appreciate what they're doing. And they turn around and say, yeah, but we're just doing our job. No, you're doing your job plus some. Now, I think photographers, if they're clever, are going to reap the rewards of people being in isolation. Um, I've been promoting uh, generational portraiture. I produced with a couple of other photographers a video. It's only a minute and a half, couple of minutes video about generational portraiture. Have your parents photographed with you, with your children? How many of us as photographers have pictures of our parents? You might see a picture behind me on the wall, which is my father, myself, and my son. Now it was taken a long time ago, um, but that portrait's vital to me because my, pa my father's no longer here. Now we, if we're clever, when we go back to work, are gonna be pushing more and more and more about family portraiture and the importance of family portraiture because people are missing their families. I heard something on the TV just a few minutes ago. Um, the grandparents are waving from the street to their grandchildren and they, they're crying because they can't run up and cuddle their grandchildren. I've got exactly the same problem. I see my granddaughter on FaceTime every evening, but it upsets me that I can't go and give her a big hug and her to tell me, go away, granddad. Um, it's that sort of missing your family and missing your friends. There was a survey a little while ago that said, what's the first thing you're going to do when you come out of lockdown? And the answer was, hug somebody. I want to go and hug my family. There will be parties out there afterwards where all people want to do is hug each other. Um, and we as photographers have got to build on that we've got to in effect invite people into our environments into our studios and get people to hug and family portraiture is going to become an even bigger thing than it's ever been before and I know in the states it's a bit much bigger than it is over here but we need to change and make the most of it we need to get those people in we need to welcome them in with open arms um, I've got a high street studio. I employ uh, nine staff. I've got four photographers. And the biggest change of all that's happening now is I can't see any of those. I can't mix with any of them, but I'm giving them homework. I am giving them homework all week. I'm getting them to do things. I'm getting them to train and learn. And when they come back to work, whenever that is, they are gonna be better than when they left. They're gonna be more ready to adapt they're going to be more willing to work hard because guess what they nearly lost their jobs and i think an awful lot of people are going to realize that their jobs are an important part of their lives and i think an awful lot of people are going to go back to work really pleased that they're back at work so and ray just big change just to ask you a question on that so 
you're using the time for your staff to train and improve their skills, but you're also developing out a marketing plan around this generational portraiture. Is that what you're, what you're working on? Yeah. As, as you know, my daughter now runs my business and has done for quite some time. I'm just a front man. You know, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the host. I'm the person that greets the customers and I still love people. You know, I was going to ask the other two guys, what would you do if you weren't a photographer? I'd love to have a restaurant and just, and look, there's the other intelligent one, you see? <laughs> um, Cindy, how are you? I am. You keeping well? Yes, thank but, you. You know, I'd love to have a restaurant where you meet and greet people and you invite them in and then the chef does all the work and the waitresses, um, you know, do all the work, etc. But I think it's that greeting and meeting of people that is what our forte is, what we're good at. Um, my staff are brilliant. I train them. I push them. I spend a lot of money on training them. But the amount of homework I've given them and things that I've given them to do, it's because when they come back, I want them to be red hot and ready. I want them to be ready to run on day one. Now, Christy has had a marketing plan in place for a long time. And the generational portraiture is something that I've been pushing the MPA photographers um, into for the last four months. The video that I created, um, is free to all photographers so if there are any photographers in other countries not that you'd necessarily want um santa claus with an english accent maybe because uh, you might have to put subtitles on it but the video is me with a santa claus in a way or as a granddad with a couple of girls a couple of children saying let's have a portrait together and that's already been used by a lot of photographers it's already brought a lot of customers into the studio now, we're going to hit that even harder when we get back to work. So the photographers are going to be more highly trained than they were before we left. But the marketing plan is going to be running at full pelt because as soon as the government gives us an inkling. Now, I don't know what it's like in the States and, and I can't guess. But over here, we've been given a, a, a spurious date of May the 11th. Now, May the 11th might be a date that they allow small businesses to start up again. We've heard this weekend that there's a couple of businesses that are opening their doors that have been closed for a month. So it's beginning to slowly happen. And that's because three weeks was what we were warned. It's now five weeks and people are getting very, very fed up of the lockdown. And everybody's looking at a way out. Everybody's looking at a date to get out of this. And it isn't going to happen on in one massive swoop. I can't imagine people are gonna be that willing to go to the cinema for a while and sit with other people. Um, but if we're a business that is allowed to start work, we will work at full pelt. Um, but we will put things into place that we had in place before. We will make our appointments slightly longer so that no customers meet other customers in the shop at any time. So we will, rework our diary, we will re-prioritise our diary so that there is no way that two families will ever meet in the shop, unless obviously they're families that are coming together for a portrait. Um, and so they're the sort of changes that we have to make. But when we know when lockdown is going to end, we will then kick in the second phase of our marketing plan. And that is going to be come to us for a hug come to us for a generational portrait, come to us for a family portrait, because all these things are already in place and we've been putting them in place as what we call the ripple effect. I believe very heavily in the ripple effect that if you drop a stone into the lake, it ripples outwards. And once people have been touched by the ripple, you do that enough times and that ripple becomes normal. Um, so the ripple effect of let's go and have a family portrait when we are up and running, will already be under full momentum. Very good. I, I think I agree with you. I think that's that's what's going to happen, that people will want to come together as families and they, they, they will respect their families even more and they'll want to capture that. Michael? We can be the catalyst. We can be the catalyst in the studio of bringing families together. Absolutely. Michael, um, what, what, have you taken this time to innovate or to do something differently or what, what 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 are your views as to 
what's going to happen when we come out of this. Well, I've taken this time to watch Monica do a lot of work in the studio. <laughs> and um, so I can rest my old bones since we've all worked for centuries here. You know, I was, I was expecting Ray to talk about Henry Fox Talbot and going from glass plates to daguerreotype, but you know. Um, you know, they, the first couple weeks, uh, Monica especially and Liam, are, we have one employee and he's a genius. He's a remarkable young man. Uh, really went in and reworked the, the website, reworked some of those things. Uh, we've been doing uh, some of the Facebook marketing and the um, funnel type marketing and we've kept that trickle going on out there. Uh, we're going to, when we get back in, we're going we're to start reemphasizing some outdoor portraits, you know, just so that we can have some of that distance. We've been doing a little bit of that every week. Uh, uh, when it's been appropriate. Uh, the big issues right now is hair and grooming and things like that, right? I said back in March to Monica, I said, you know, our big issue is people have to get groomed, get haircuts when we get back into the, the saddle here. So we're going to ease back into all that stuff. Uh, I think besides what Ray is talking about, the generational and the family portraits and the connection, we need to subtly put out that word too that What's been so important for people in this lockdown is, is been the people with the arts. You know, we've been looking, we've been watching movies, we've been watching Netflix, we've been watching the creative part of our society be really important for us. And I think that's a little subtle line that we can tell our clients about also. Um, We've been doing some things like uh, staying in contact with some of our commercial accounts, giving them advice, suggesting business books, marketing books to help stay connected with their, their clients. So, you know, we're keeping up relationships, things like that. So we're actually kind of excited about some of these things that we're going to get back into plans and they're working with. Um, I, so I you're making sure exciting. you're staying front of mind with your clients, right? Yeah. You're doing a lot of activities that you're reaching out to them and you're being proactive. Turn the faucet on a little bit more as, you know, as, as Ray says, we're not quite sure when that opening is going to be, but we're going to edge it up just a bit. I think it's important that, you know, we need to stay true to our own personalities and to the personalities of our business. You know, uh, I know for myself, for Monica, and when we've been together, in our studio, uh, we make the worst decisions when we worry about money. And uh, we have to really stay true to uh, what we really, the personality of our business. We can't be desperate. You know, you have to uh, stay true to what, what your, 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 your studio is all about, be it working for the masses or being a, a high-end studio, you know, whatever it is. You can't be out there and be desperate. You know, there's going to be opportunities. Maybe it won't come as fast as you want it to come, but there's going to be opportunities and, and we're going to be the survivors. You know, I know some of the folks may be tuning in and go, hmm, look at these guys ages or whatever. But, you know, there's something about having that, that fire, that marathon-like attitude, that perseverance, that that thing in all of us, all four of us on this screen that says, you know, there's valleys, there's mountaintops, but we're going to make it. We have no choice but to make it. We're going to make it, you know. Um, one of the first people I thought about when all this stuff started going down was Ralph. Because I, you know, Ralph and I have had a long relationship and a lot of different things, a lot of different committees, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And I tell you what, I have so admired what Ralph has done with his family and his studio and thriving coming through Katrina. He didn't give up. He didn't moan about it publicly. And he kept his family together. And they've come out it with a stronger, better, more vibrant studio and business. So that's what we all can do, too. Because things that are more important in our lives we're gonna, are going to come up to the top. And that's family and relationships. And you can stop it, Ralph Romaguerra. <laughs> so, but so, you know, the, the so, big things in marketing, in life, 
uh, and running our business and, and getting out quality product is still gonna it's still there that hasn't disappeared you know and we yes. have to reemphasize that ralph can i bring it to you and um so ralph just so people know so you your business you have both a volume high school senior business and then you have the boutique studio experience as well primarily for high school seniors as well as some families right 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 and michael thank you very much um the boys run the studio for the most part, but I mean, it's constant communication. Uh, I was speaking to them this morning, you know, as Ray said, the scheduling is going to have to be different because usually during the summer we might have, because that's when they do all of their pictures for the yearbook, we might have 30 people in the studio at one time, which is not going to be able to happen. So that's going to have to, the schedule is going to have to be spread out, whether it's more hours or more days that we give to a particular school. Um, if, if you were to say, why do these three guys, what one thing did, that these three guys believe in? And I believe that these three guys believe in education in education face-to-face -face education sure internet's fine youtube's fine but face-to-face -face where you can talk to somebody talk about your situations but my mama said if you learn something new every day just think how smart you'll be at 100 and i really think that one of the reasons the main reason that I believe the, the Romeo studio, and I believe my, my, my two friends here, is we believe in education. So you've got to learn something new every day. And isn't it a great blessing that right now is a good time to improve your skills no matter what level it is. You know, every day I'm on something trying to learn something new. And I strongly suggest that. Uh, speaking of learning something new, if I can uh, put in a cheap plug, Ronan, for Texas school, uh, this week, starting Sunday, was supposed to be Texas school. Now, I think a lot of people know what Texas school is, and some people don't. We have over 1,000 people. It would be 998 if it wasn't for 3XM, they, they make it. <laughs> but seriously, it is a week-long education with 30-something different instructors. And so what they're doing next week, when they're supposed to be in session, that got moved further back, of course. But they're doing education every hour of every day. And Texas School is not only about education, it's also about partying, so there will be virtual happy hours every night. So come join us on the Texas School. You're going to have to go to Texas School Facebook page and ask to be in, but I know somebody who's in charge of that. <laughs> yes, she was standing beside you a couple of moments ago. So... Um, so Cindy's heavily involved in that with Don Dixon and right. Charles C and, and others, which is, is wonderful. So to get to that, Ralph, I think it's texasschool.org is the website. Um, That's or you the can website, but you need to go and ask to be part of the Facebook group. Okay. So ask to be part. So if they go into their Facebook and they put Texas School, it right. should come up. Right. Um, and, professional stock team. and that's free of charge, right? That's been made free of charge. Yeah. So education every day for a number of days, as well as some virtual parties. You just have to bring your own drink to the virtual party. Obviously. Yeah, we don't have free beer. You have to bring your own at night. Very good, very good. We'll so I love that. Ralph. Charge it to Ralph. Yes, yes, send Ralph the bill. So, um, so Ralph, in, in your business, so other than education, is there anything else you're looking at? In, 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 so you're, you're, you're setting yourself up for when you come back to deal with the social distancing that probably isn't going to disappear very, very quickly. Is there any indication on the, on the volume side, the schools, as to 
are they are those are, is that just going to cancel for this year or are they going to reschedule those opportunities or school is canceled for the year um graduations are put off currently to july um it, it it's really tough with no schools in there's no money coming in uh, i'm saying no money coming in we also have the contract for the uh, Louisiana High School Athletic Association. So we still get monies coming in, people buying online sports pictures and that type of thing. So that's that's another blessing. But yeah, we're um, gearing up to get ready for schools. Um, I really like the idea and, and we do promote to our seniors to bring their parents or whatever. And we get a small percentage, but hopefully after I watch Ray's video, we'll get a larger percentage. Very good. And I know at Katrina, when Katrina happened, you, you started up by offering a retouching service and stuff like that. Is there any opportunity now to do that? I know some photographers are, are suggesting that they can do that or they can revisit old negatives and, and see if they can sell them to past clients. Have, have you looked at any of those areas or is there anything in that, do you think? Well, after Katrina, of course, when you had eight feet of water in people's houses, you know, we had a lot of reorders and we had a lot of copy and restoration. Well, we're not going to have that this time. The thing that's going on right now for the seniors, the high school seniors, this is their big year and there's no proms, graduations are iffy, you know, um, we made, started making signs with the seniors' face, uh, yard signs, and they have gone over ridiculously well, ridiculously well, beautiful signs. So that's sort of a way to um, celebrate the prom even though it's not happening, so they put a right. sign in their, in, in their yard. It's celebrating their senior year, but you got to think out the box for a different product line. So seeing that they're not having graduation invitations and all the prom stuff. Well, this is something that's never been done. And it's just, we've never done it. I'm sure it's been done, but we're making uh, these yard signs and they're very classy. And every senior has their face and their school logo and, proudly putting them out and posting them on Facebook. And so it's, it's not only profitable, it's, it's marketing, you know, to not only our current uh, contracts, but hopefully non-contracts will see us and make us their contract photographer. Well, that sounds a really good idea because I've seen one of my daughters is on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, um, but all the young people apparently are on TikTok. And TikTok, for those who don't know, it's 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 a facility where you put up some video, um, and you ha can have before and after, and you can do voiceovers and all that sort of thing. So it's a new Snapchat or Instagram apparently. But my daughter was saying that her feed is full of high school seniors where they show themselves in their regular clothes and then they're doing their hair and makeup at home, dressing up in their prom dress. And they're showing the transition in video from not being ready for prom to being ready for prom. So they're still looking for ways to be recognized and, and celebrate the prom, even though it's postponed or delayed or whatever that might be. Yes. So. Ray. Actually, talk. There's, there's two things that's interesting when, I think Ralph said, if anybody's um, tuning in and they see three of us, I was actually saying to you, we should call this Talking With Dinosaurs. <laughs> and, then, and then I read something yesterday that dinosaurs were on the earth for 157 million years and human beings have only been around for 200,000 years. So that's why the three of us have succeeded. But also, Michael said the exact thing that's been in my mind for a while, when you showed me the statistics of how many people go out of business in the first year, two years, five years, 10 years. And that's because far too many people coming into not only this industry, but certainly this industry who think it's a sprint. And the one thing the three of us have learned through experience is it's a marathon. 
none of us could probably run a hundred yards now if we tried <laughs> but i'm sure we could walk around the block a few times but it's not a sprint and that's why people go out of business because they think it's easy they think they've just got to say that they're a photographer and it's going to happen we're successful because of our belief in ourselves our customers treat your customers every single customer as a friend because you're going to meet them in the supermarket you're going to meet them at the petrol garage you're going to meet them everywhere in your life and therefore if you treat customers as friends not as a checkbook or a credit here i shouldn't say checkbook because the kids won't know what a checkbook is but you know don't treat your customers as if they're a credit card because the credit card will follow the warmth of having a customer as a friend and we've all stayed in business because of that belief and the other thing i wanted to say is the very first think tank um webinar that came on and i can't remember who it was but one of the young ladies said something like look at your outgoings look at your expenses and cut out the subscription of this or this magazine subscription or whatever and i was jumping up and down thinking perhaps i should put a message out ask both michael and ralph where would they be if it wasn't for the pp of a and the answer is nowhere they're both feel i know very privileged to have been presidents i was president of the mpa um, about 12 15 12 14 years ago um, I'm now chairman and CEO of the Master Photographers Association, but it's because of that that I've been successful because of our belief in training. And it's not just the education and the training, it's what we do for others. Because as soon as we help somebody else, we are helping ourselves because we then realize how much we know and how much we can impart that knowledge. And that makes us better photographers and better businessmen. I'm doing more now in lockdown for the members of the MPA than I've done in the last four years of being chairman because they need us more now than ever. Belonging to the PP of A, belonging to the MPA, belonging to your local association, belonging to Sector Texas School and all of these things are an essential. Can you imagine what it must be like not belonging to anything at all and sitting in a little box thinking that the world all happens inside this box it must be horrible and all of our strengths is because of our beliefs in the longevity of the marathon i couldn't agree more the the work that mpa is doing and i see it every single day because i'm in the group um, and I see it for PPA opening up their resources and the help that they're giving to photographers. It's actually quite unique as an industry. I don't see that very much elsewhere. So that's something as an industry I think we can be very, very proud of. And you guys as leaders, you know, you, you, you brought that culture, you know, through this industry that we have. So I thank you so much for that. I really do. Um, Michael, um, so... If I was to ask you, there's a lot of young photographers, yeah, and I see it everywhere, not just, you know, I see a fear in them and, you know, they're afraid and we've talked to them about how they can use their time to prepare when we come out of this. But if you were to give them one piece of advice, just one, just to get to adopt a positive mindset in these challenging times, because it's hard to be positive, right? Um, and I'm not saying that we dip our heads in the sand and we ignore what's happening, but how can we, is there one thing that you do every single day to be in business this long that gives you the mindset to be here in this business today? Um, I'm going to play off that just a little bit and just say one of the things that's really been important to myself, and then and this has come out of, uh, being associated with PPA for so many years now and having all these relationships that's been so important uh, in all parts of my life. It's been a very important part of all of our lives, right? Our associations. Um, I, I think you need to get two or three friends and, um, and really start to bond and get on Zoom calls and talk to each other and brainstorm and um, help each other and be
be creative and think out of the box. Think out of the photography portrait studio box and look around at other industries and get this little mini support group. Uh, we have uh, the last couple of years, especially, have really worked at disciplining ourselves and getting on a Zoom call every couple of weeks with three other studios here in the country. And it has been mind blowing how successful our studio has been because of that. Because, you know, I tell you what, we, we all have good days and bad days. Hmm. And, and thankfully, it seems like our friends are off one day as opposed to the days that we're having good days or bad days, right? If you know what I mean? So that we can support each other and help each other and work through things and maybe see things a little bit more clearly. So besides, you know, it's hard to get this intimacy uh, sometimes when you belong to the mass photographers group or MPA or PP of A or something like that, because there's so many people out there. But when you get these three or four other people and, and commit to uh, talking to each other every couple of days or every day or just checking in or having a Zoom call one hour a day, something like that, that will give you something you have to work for, answer to, and be steady about and have that support. So I think that's hugely important because we're all in different situations. Our communities are different. Uh, Monica and I live in a smaller town, uh, Williamsburg, right near Jamestown, you know, the first you know, British colony here. And uh, it's so different than where Ray lives and where Ralph lives, you know? So we have different uh, challenges. We have a lot of the same things, but we have different challenges. And having that little support group, I think is huge. And so for your business. So Michael, that support group you set up and there are obviously other photographer studios. How did you go about choosing who you wanted that mastermind group to be? Is is it was there a process you went through where you're trying to find businesses that were like you but weren't competing with you or share the same values or how did you approach that? Because well, we really wanted people to stretch us, you know. Uh we didn't want uh uh, so we reached out. Uh, we all kind of mutually actually kind of reached out together. Uh, it's actually, uh, we have a little group with Tim Walden and Allison Tyler Jones and Catherine Langsford, who's up in Vancouver. And it's mind blowing being with those three other studios. Um, every one of those other studios thinks out of the box and thinks differently about how to approach their studios and their business. And um, the depth of thought and feeling and ideas is unbelievable. I mean, we get on a call every two, uh, for two hours every two weeks or so, two to three weeks. And uh, it's, uh, I've never seen, I've never been part of anything like that. Because I... it's totally out of the box. You know, uh, people would love to just listen to the two hours, I think, because it's amazing to me the ideas that come out of it. I, I love that piece of advice of finding like-minded people who share the same values and you just brainstorm together. And I'm sure there's so, at times there's sort of, you know, real debate going on, but it's, a, it's in a constructive way and you're working together to try and get the best from each other and get those ideas down, right? Totally. And, and we're always there for each other, you know, and, uh, and just true caring and love and concern for each other. And you got to have those like-minded values. All, all of us here in this screen, we have like-minded values. We care, like Ray was saying, we care for the people that we're dealing with. We care for them and love them. And just, you know, they're like our friends. You know, we have to, we have to find clients that are almost like our friends because we have same, similar values then. You know, we have similar values, interests, things like that. So uh, you do need to find people that can uh, really support each other, you know, in this little mini group, but it's about relationships. It's about that support with each other. And I think we need that. Like Ray was saying, we can't just being by yourself in some box. You know, I'm really sad for some, there's a, a few of our friends that are, um, are by themselves in their homes. You know, they don't, they're not living with somebody else. And I'm like, I, I just can't imagine that, you know? 
and and I think there's an old saying that my granny used to use, you know, a problem shared is a problem halved, but you know, you, you, you're more than a quartering it or 15 it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you had that support that you absolutely know, know, like, and trust each other, you know, to that depth. I think that's great advice. So what you're, what, what you're suggesting is that use this time. If you know people out there, reach out to them and see if you can create a small group where you can, build that relationship that you can share ideas with each other and 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 absolutely and this will and you know and of course you build these relationships up and you're going to carry this on you know hopefully for years you know ralph you're like us in that we're a family business so you've a lot of family in your business and you know i'm the same we i think i've seven blood relatives in our business and 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 two that are our, our true marriage are related. So that can has its advantages and disadvantages, but often in a time like this, um, do you think it's an advantage or a disadvantage when you're in a crisis situation like we're in, or do you want to well, share? I think it's, it's an advantage. I mean, uh, the two boys uh, have been and are running the studio. And actually, during this time, they even get along, which is a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> which could be challenging at times. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for the, the boys and the business. And even though uh, the employees are not blood relatives, uh, some of them I really consider in fact, I consider all of them as family, but there's a couple special ones that, you know, nothing's going to happen to them, even though we're in this crisis. So, so, so regards tr maintaining a positive mindset through this, um, is there one piece of advice you would give to everybody as to how you approach that? or How do I approach it? I mean... You just have to be positive. You have to act positive. You have to think positive. You got to talk positive. Even when you don't feel like being positive, you, you've got to be, you got to be positive. And I really, um, I, I put out, again, I've moved out of town about 45 minutes away. And, you know, it's, I, I put out uh, an email once a week or whatever, just saying, hey, I'm glad y'all are around. Hey, it's hump day. Think about what we're doing on hump day, you know, and just, just fun. You got to, you got to have fun. And I got a great group. That's a great piece of advice. So as the leaders of our organizations, regardless of the size, we have to be positive for people and the same way, even if you're a photographer working on your own, you have to be positive for your clients, right? And, 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 and show that positivity and that hope and that we will come through this and we're there for each other. I love yeah. that. And it's a damn yeah. sight better than a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I said, it's a damn sight better than having a proper job. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, being a photographer is a privilege. Not, I've not done a day's work in 52 years. I've just picked up a camera and taken photographs. I do what I would do for nothing and people pay me. What, what's wrong in that? You know, I just feel sorry for those people that have to sit in a lorry going up and down the motorway and things like that. That's my idea of hell. But I think this positivity is totally, uh, is a necessity. You look in the mirror in the morning, and if you don't like what you see, don't blame the mirror. <laughs> Talk to the person in the mirror and just tell him how lucky he is or how lucky she is. Remind them they could be having a proper job, and that would be hell. So being positive is wonderful. Having people around you who are positive is wonderful. Um, I think it's quite funny, Ralph, saying about, yeah, even now the boys are getting on. You know, that's one of the problems with family is the frictions can be far greater. I'm lucky I have a fantastic daughter in Christie and it drives my wife up the wall because she says, you two are so alike. And, you know, in a way that's good and in a way that's bad. But having family, and again, this is this thing about how do we market and run the business? 
we market the business as a family business. We tell the customers we are a family business. I treat my staff, I employ all females, and I treat all of my staff as if they are my children. Um, and that to me is my family. They unfortunately see me as granddad rather than dad, um, but you know, I have to live with that. But we can work for our customers and our customers' families, and we can appreciate our customers' families because we treat the business as if it's a big family. I've been for four years driving the Master Photographers Association as a family. I want everybody to come together as a family. The one thing the PP of A taught me, and I got my Master Craftsman's degree many years ago because of Michael and Ralph pushing me uh, and things like that. The Americans taught me how to party. I didn't know what enjoyment was until I went out to America and went to their conventions and these people went, come up to our room, we're having a party. And you go into this room and there's 50 people in there and you think, what on hell is going on? You know, it's, it's a family. The PP of A is a family and their conventions is one big family. And that's why we're all successful because we treat each other as a family. And that's so important. Thank you so much, guys. Have, has anyone any last piece of advice before? I could talk here all day and all night. Um, but well, is I don't there, know where else to go. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, yeah. is there any last piece of advice that you want to give? Ray, do you, I'll start with you. Yeah, you will come out of this. And the one thing that nature teaches us and has taught us, in fact, in the last four weeks is that it's all about survival of the fittest. If you're the sort of person that moans left, right and centre about the world's not fair, life's not fair and everything else. The only thing that's fair is my hair. Apart from that, nothing else is fair. And we will get out of this. And the people that succeed are the people who are positive, who are fit. And I don't necessarily mean physically, although that helps. But the people who have learned something new, the people who have put themselves out to be a better individual than when this lockdown started. Our purpose on earth is to leave it better than we found it. The purpose of lockdown is we come out of lockdown a stronger person than we went in. And if you look at them in the person in the mirror, square in the eyes and say, we are gonna do something about this and we are gonna come out of this a better person, then you'll succeed. But if you blame somebody else, if you blame the Chinese or you blame your governments or your whoever is in charge, you are not going to succeed. Do not blame anybody else for what's happened because we're all in the same boat. And therefore, it's the person in the mirror that's going to make the difference. Love that, Ray. Thank you for that. Michael, same question to you. Well, to start with... Um... We did not teach Ray how to party. party. He knew how to do this. This is his cradle. So I don't know what he's talking about. Um, Ray's absolutely right. We're going to, the whole world's going through this. Okay, fine. You know, and we're going to be great coming out of this. Our studio is going to be great. We're going to be healthier. We're going to enjoy life more. We're going to enjoy the little things in life more. It's, it's, we're gonna be fantastic. We have to be, there, there's no other choice. And really look around you folks. We are so much better off than 99% of the people out there in the world. We do what we love to do. We have a roof over our heads. We have in many ways uh, our own choices to make. We're not forced to do this or that. We, we have, we have the ability to make our own choices. And that, that is such an, an amazing gift. We, you know, and we have an amazing gift because God also gave each one of us the personality, the talent, and the perseverance to do what we're doing. You know, but we have to use our minds. We can't be stupid. We, we have to differentiate our business. We have to be the best at what we're doing. We have to, to set ourselves apart all those things that we needed to do before this pandemic started. 
We love what we do. All four of us love what we do. We love the people that we're dealing with. We care about what we do. We still have passion about life and we can't forget that. And you need all that to really, really make it. So we're just Thank reminding you. ourselves. We have to remind ourselves of that every day. And that's what Ray's talking about looking in the mirror. And Ralph does the same thing, I know that. And by the way, Ralph has two great sons and they're uh, remarkable guys. So he's a fortunate man. Ralph, have you a final piece of advice for our viewers? You know, I, I, I think what the, the four of us have, have spoken about is persistence, resilience, positivity. I mean, even though we might not, Ray and I don't run our studios anymore, we have cameras, we love to photograph, you know, and when you don't do something for a while, you get really antsy. And I can't wait for the next time I push the button. And I look forward to finding that next client, whether that's a complimentary client or a, a session paying client. Uh, and to the young person, you know, don't be afraid of the old guys. They want to help you. Any questions you have, make friends, you know, and ask them questions. Show us your pictures, you know, as long as you can handle the truth. But, you know, be resilient, be, be positive, get, get excited, learn something new, go out and try it, and uh, this too shall pass. Well, all I can say is you three lighthouses of wisdom, inspiration, and great advice. My, the hairs are standing on the back of my neck. I thank you all so much for joining us in the Think Tank. I know people will watch this. They will be inspired by it. They will, if their hope has been down a bit, they'll be renewed. I thank you so much. My pleasure. It's been wonderful. And then, and funny enough, from what Michael said, this is an example of what will happen after lockdown, Zoom will not go away. And what's gonna happen after lockdown is people are gonna to stay together in small groups. They're gonna to talk together in small groups. The MPA have had a thing called the Aperture Cafe where photographers come into it at certain times of the day and 25 people will chat. Well, you can do that with three people, five people, 10 people. And that's part of the change that's gonna happen when lockdown ends, Zoom is going to carry on going. And what we've just done will continue way, way beyond whatever the governments tell us that's going to happen. And we're the lucky ones because guess what? It could be a lot worse than it is now. <laughs> Agreed. Good, good, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good night, everybody, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you so much, guys. See you all again soon. Bye for now. Bye, boys. Bye.